Hello YouTube, this is Lord Zath bringing you another episode of Zath's Replay Theater. And uh, this one's kind of special. We have Wat David in the Agnavoy of all ships, and he's with us today. How's it going? So, um, this is kind of interesting, because a lot of people feel that the Agnavoy is kind of like the worst destroyer you can take in ranked, right? Uh, yeah, that's... Um, <laughs> not too many people are going to argue with you on that. So, um, why are you taking it? Okay, so um, I'm, I'm one of the five people on the planet that thinks this is an actual pretty great ship. Um, and I think it specifically still holds up in ranked play um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, um, it has good detection, which a lot of people kind of overlook because Soviet destroyers have a rep for having horrible detection. But it actually gets down to 6.1, which is pretty decent. Um, so it can spot and contest caps and sneak around and do all the normal destroyer stuff. Um, it actually has pretty good torpedoes. They're not fast, but they have 10 kilometer range and um, pretty good reload, 90 seconds. So you can actually kind of keep areas saturated and hold back pushes and that sort of thing. Um, and last but not least, it has uh, it has good guns. It only has four, as everyone is quick to point out. But um, you have the what I think is probably the longest range or the longest effective range of any of the guns. So you can do a lot of good support fire and keep battleships burning and that sort of stuff that most of the other destroyers can't do. And you can do it from a range where return fire is going to be mostly misses, which is good. And I have a feeling we're going to see some of what you're just explaining uh, demonstrated in this battle. Possibly. All right, good. Um, yeah, and, you know, we, we I played around with it a bit in Supremacy League and kind of found the same. The torpedoes are, are much more useful than a lot of people realize. Oh yeah, uh, you can't use. I mean, it's it's a lot like Benson torpedoes, honestly. Um, they're they're very similar, uh, just plus or minus a couple percentage points in pretty much all the attributes. Um, so they're not fast enough to be attack torpedoes the way IJN ships use them. Uh, but yeah, as far as just uh, keeping key areas full of torps, uh, torping smokes, that sort of thing, uh, they're really good. Sounds good. Um, and I see you've got. Um Let's talk about your signals real quick. So you've got the consumable re reload one. You've got uh, speed boost, or well, the, the extra 5% to top speed. Um, Juliet Whiskey for more flooding chances. You've got the Papa Papa for free XP, which jives pretty well with the 100% um, camo that you're running. Uh, you've got both fire chance flags and the commander XP flag. Yeah, and you'll note um, a key missing flag is uh, detonation flags. Um, yep. uh, so unfortunately, I'm actually I started the season running quite low on them. I used a lot up in clan battles, uh, so I had almost none. So this particular build, I'm actually uh, I'm actually running the as much as I hate it uh, on principle. I'm running the detonation module in in the first slot uh, and saving my flags for when I get to the five two bracket. Because um, yeah. I, I I think I have enough to make it through there, and then I'll put the the normal uh, the normal main battery protection uh, module in place. Right, that's very smart too that you're using the magazine one. So many people complain about detonations, and then they say, "Well, I don't want to run the magazine one." So, makes sense. Now I'm just taking a look at your other ships here. So you've got a low yang that's all fully flagged up, another low yang fully flagged up, which is good to see, and we have an Atago. It's not flagged up. <laughs> okay. Actually, it looks like it's a Takao. I don't know why it's a Tago in the game. Turpits that's uh, properly flagged up, too. And this other Turpits could use a little more flag, but that's okay. And then finally, we've got Archipayev. Ew. Uh, he's got a couple flags. Okay. So um, you kind of went through a little bit about the strengths and weaknesses of the ship, which is awesome. So um, are we ready to get started? Absolutely. Let's go. All right. I'm going to apologize if uh, my cat sounds noisy. He wants to lay on my lap, apparently. So um, anyways, this is Hotspot. Um, looking at the matchmaker, it's you versus a Benson, essentially. The Lo Yang's kind of canceled. Chibayev, Kudazov, typical. They have an Edinburgh, which is interesting, versus an Otago. I'd probably give the Otago the edge. And then Turpitz, Bismarck, whatever. Sure. So, yeah, it's already a bad sign. If you look at chat, um, one of our Turpitz says, YOLO center of map. And um, 
I, I encourage him not to, but, um, and I'm hoping it's a joke, but you never know. Um, turns out not to be a joke. Yeah. I was going to say following the, the next part here, non-aggressive does not win. That's, um, yeah, I don't like seeing that. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, the replay's a little jaggy. You can probably see that too on your end. Um, sometimes that happens when you when we pause the game at the beginning. It'll catch up. It just takes a little bit of time. Sure. As long as it's aggressive, not suicide. Yep. So you guys are all kind of in in B cap. Makes sense. And you've got uh, your premium consumables. Also makes sense. Ognavoy is able to run defensive fire. Have you found that useful so far this season? Um, in ranked, not so much. Um, I, I'm debating whether I want to switch to speed boost. Um, I've only had, I think, maybe one match with a carrier. Um, I actually shot down quite a few planes, but uh, I just I like having it. I've actually been able to shoot down spotter planes that were being annoying, so uh, I, I think it still has... it, it does come in handy. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about it, so I might actually talk to some people and see what they think. But uh, I've I've definitely gotten gotten occasional use. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I mean, I, I would think that it would be useful for shooting down like a catapult um, plane or something like that. Yeah, and yeah, I think that's the main the main thing it's good for, and that's not not a small thing. So right right about now. Um, as soon as those battleships got spotted, I, I'm swinging around. Uh, I tell my team, I think, uh, yeah, I, I'm letting them know I'm gonna kind of push west and try to hold hold back this this push that's coming along the uh, down the three line. Uh, let the Yolang or the the Lo Yangs uh, keep doing their thing up at sea, and I tell the team, you know, stay on them, stay with them, protect them. The Ogna boy is really good at this sort of situation where. The enemy is sort of funneled into a spot, um, you know, just throw torpedoes at it, be gotcha. annoying, slow them down, you know, force them to position poorly. There's a, here's our superstar turpits uh, eating a bunch of torpedoes in the middle of the map. So, mm -hmm. um, anyway, that's that's my thinking. Is you know, you guys keep keep doing what you're doing, keep the other destroyers safe, and I'll try and just slow them down and and be a pain in the neck. Right. Well, it seems unfortunate. One of the Loyangs looks like he stopped when he could have kept going. I think he wanted a torpedo in the channel. And so then your Lo Yang at sea is by himself, which is not good. Yeah, I was hoping they'd stay together. But you're doing the absolute right thing here because you notice that they're pushing. And so, uh, especially with your torpedoes, right, you can get in front of them and just torpedo them as they push. Exactly, and that's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm waiting to see what this Bismarck's going to do. I didn't know if he was going to go wide around the island or not, but looks like he's turning back in, so then... Yep. Oh, go hey, there goes your turrets. Already. Yep. Not even five minutes. <laughs> wow. Thanks for camping. <laughs> wow, okay. Yep, we're, we're, we're over here camping. It's a bummer. We should have all driven into the middle of the map. Yep. Again, I'm sorry for the jagginess. I don't understand why it's still being all... Uh, I'll choppy. Yep, there goes the loading at sea. Oh, good, you got the other torpedo hit on the Edinburgh, and he's flooding now. Yeah. So he's gone, right? Like, unless he can get a super heal a couple times. Oh, and a torp on the Viz. Oh, always good to see a Lo Yang behind the team. <laughs> Look at that guy. He's not doing anything useful. Yeah. It's almost like they all decided to, to charge, and then um, he's like, well, wait, let me get in front, and they're, like, too busy charging. Yeah, something like that. So I am just uh, paranoid about... I, I wasn't paying attention to the Edinburgh's heal and all that, so I, I'm, I'm worried about him dropping off and recovering, so... Absolutely. Even though there's a bunch of enemies there, I'm figuring they're focused on the people to their east, and they're just going to ignore me long enough for me to finish off the, the Edinburgh and just sort of make sure it happens. Yeah, that's something I see a lot of people don't do enough in rank. They see somebody low health, and they're just like, well, I'll go shoot somebody else. Nope. <laughs> Keep shooting them until they're dead. Exactly. 
Well, and I think it's especially important. You, you get people always, uh, even in randoms, you know, sorry for the kill steal or whatever. And it's not a kill steal if it means that you're going to win the battle. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a, I mean, it's kind of a joke talking about securing kills, but I mean, it's a, it's a real thing. And that's, mm -hmm. you, you just have to do that. There goes your other Tirpids, you are now battleshipless. Yeah. I have a feeling though that you're about to even the score with those torpedoes. That Bismarck in front obviously is not going to take him, but that Tirpitz looks like he might. And I'm trying to spot the Tirpitz, and there he is, so... Oh. Wow, he somehow managed to avoid them. Now here I do ignore the... Yeah, I do ignore the Bismarck, because he's still within firing range of the Chappie, and I know the Chappie can finish him, so... Mm-hmm. You make exceptions based on, I guess, instincts or whatever. Yep. And I'm kind of misjudging, uh, <laughs> misjudging this turp. It's, and I'm, I'm thinking he's actually going to get greedy and try and chase the chappy or whatever. So I'm kind of shooting down the wrong side until I realize he's committing to turning the other way. Yep. It happens. I mean, which is, that's the correct thing for him to do. But you know, I don't know. I just kind of guessed wrong. It's interesting, though, how, like, they're completely ignoring you. Um, that's one of the hidden strengths that doesn't show up on a, a stat sheet for the Agnavoy. Um, it is, it's, it's, it has such a reputation for being a terrible ship that you get away with a lot of these sort of things that you wouldn't be able to get away with in a lot of other ships. And, uh, you know, yeah, people will just uh, kind of let you sail around and, oh, it's just a stupid Agnavoy. I'm, I'm not quite sure why the Turpets wasn't wasn't shooting me there. I don't think he has anything else to even be firing at. And then there's the little Ying. Now, that, I misjudged that too. I really didn't think he was going to pop up there. Um, I, it's, it makes no sense why he went. I thought he was going to come around behind me trying to have a one-on-one -on -one fight and instead he drives right behind our chappy. So we had some bad luck at the beginning, uh, but <laughs> their little Yang uh, making that particular Navigational decision is, um, you know, helping to balance it out a tiny bit. Yeah, how about we rename him to Throw Ying? There we go. <laughs> so, so I'm pretty happy. Um, I'm pretty happy for that happening. Uh, but again, in in this game, which is a bit of a seesaw, um, our Lo Yang, who is very low health, gets spotted out by sea, and um, and finished off. Well, hopefully the uh, Takao or whatever can finish the job and the important thing is you're still full health so yeah and so I was um, I was dark here and so I decided not to shoot because I really thought I, that, that that was exactly what we were talking about making these sort of mistakes about I, I don't know if it was a mistake but um, you know they're, they're not dead until they're dead is is kind of the, the moral of that story mm -hmm. um, well, and I mean, you've got a Kutuzov that's right there, so I mean... Yeah, I... Oh, that's that's big. That was the Kutuzov knowing he's going down, so popping his radar for one last chance to help you guys. That's awesome. Yeah. So, shooting blind into here, but I kind of lost, kind of lost track of him. He oh, pops boy. up, but not long enough for me to... <laughs> yep. Doesn't stay rendered long enough. Now, how do you feel about the guns in a 1v1 against a Lo Yang? Or, say, a Seahull Benson or something? So, um, it, it really kind of depends on, on the situation and my appraisal of how good they are. <laughs> um, um, so, actually, if you want to pause it here, this is... Um, sure. Th this ends up being pretty... Uh, uh, a, a pretty a pretty decent little uh, bit of bit of uh, the game so I, I I do this sort of thing a lot just to and I kind of learned it from world of tanks just which I don't play but I watch a bunch of videos <laughs> um, so I, I was heading straight to sea and I didn't want to be going that way but I kept going that way until I went dark right <laughs> and then I turned around um, again just to sort of throw throw misinformation onto the other teams mini map um, and just sort of uh, be able to be a little bit unpredictable. So anyway, just thought I'd, I'd throw that in there. Um, 
but yeah, as far um, I mean, you can open them back up. As far as like playing a playing against a Lo Yang or a Benson, it really depends on the range and how good I think they are at shooting. Um, I will take a one-on-one -on -one fight uh, at you know, let's say like eight to ten kilometers any day. Um, but what I notice is in that sort of medium, medium, maybe like six to eight kilometer range, um, it really depends on how good they are. And you can tell in the first couple of salvos if a player really knows how to use those U.S. guns or not. Um, if they're chunking you for one to two K on those first couple of salvos, I might just pop my smoke and run. Oh, hello. It, <laughs> and so what I was saying about... Um, <laughs> about throwing uh, misinformation into the map. Mm -hmm. uh, he thought I was going to C, and we, we have two caps. They had to do something. So wh what's what's your uh, what's your strength if you're a DD with almost no health? Uh, well, going and back capping, right? The hilarious so. thing, though, was is you notice you're, you were no longer located, so he had radio location. So he knew you were going the other way. Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah. I didn't catch that. That's pretty funny. Wow. <laughs> okay. I was going to comment on that when you had me pause earlier, because the, the thing is, you know, you, I was about to say, you're not going to trick that guy. It's possible that it's, maybe it was, maybe it was the Kuda, no, because the Kuda's off, nope. uh, we don't, we don't know yet, but he's, he's, he's heading away from the Otago, so I don't, yeah, I don't really know. Yeah, as soon, um, as, he, as, soon as he died, you were no yeah, longer located. That's super funny. So, anyway, that, that worked out, that yeah. worked out pretty well. We've retained the cap, so, um... It's. St <laughs> I mean, it's still it's still a totally losable game at this point, though. Um, if both of them push down and take B, uh, you know, it's going to take me a while to get back up and recap A. Um, I can get some resets in, but if they if they push together, I can't really be too aggressive because again, the the uh, yeah, their 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 kudas off can can trash me pretty quickly if I'm anywhere near him so yep and the otago is is full health too or close to it so both of you are very healthy kutuzov we know is not that healthy and benson mm -hmm. we don't know because we haven't seen him in a long time yeah oh benson's in b yep so i know at this point now yeah exactly i know where they both are and i'm thinking okay i'll i'll keep this guy lit i'll start heading you know start heading north be ready to cap a now, um, just a quick question. Why aren't you communicating with the Otago right now and, and trying to say, hey, you know, maybe try to get over here or whatever? Uh, oh, you are, actually. <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> as, as, though, um, as though we planned that. <laughs> right? Well, the important thing is, with the Kutuzov going back around the island, I mean, you have almost free reign now to engage the Benson if needed. Yeah, and so what I was talking about as far as... You know, sort of uh, summing them up or, or sizing them up as far as their, their marksmanship. That uh, five kilometer shot where he's mostly missing, that tells me, okay, let's 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 go. Like I have more HP than you, and right. you know, I'm 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 perfectly fine taking that duel and, and even keeping the range pretty close. Because what I don't want, if I know I can be more accurate than the enemy, then I don't want him to be able to just turn around and run and smoke and, and get away. I actually want to force the engagement. So. This is closer than I would normally want to be versus a U.S. destroyer, but um, I'm kind of wanting to, to keep the range close enough that I can finish the fight. However, uh, the Kutuzov pops back up, um, which is not a situation I want, because I'll take on the Benson, but not the two of them. Yep. Um, so I pop my smoke immediately, but luckily I'm going at an angle where I keep him spotted just long enough to, <laughs> to get a few more shots off. And there we go. Enemy destroyer sunk. And at this point, I mean, solved, you're. What what is going through your mind right now, looking at the, the score and all that? Yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm again I'm I'm not happy. We we have two caps, but uh, I'm thinking <clears throat> I'm thinking okay well. <laughs> I, I did my part. I'll start moving to B, but I'll let the Otago finish the Kutuzov off. Um, and then at this point, I'm like, oh, well, you know what? 14 kilometers, that's what this thing is built for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's, you know, let's go ahead and shoot him. 
Might as well help out a little bit. I'm so used to I'm so used to things like uh, like shores and all that that I <laughs> you can see me very badly underestimating how tightly the Kutuzov turns. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting that uh, that big wide full speed <laughs> turning radius, and so I'm shooting way outside like an idiot. Yeah, and so but, to see Artago is looking look he's losing. Yeah, he's losing very badly. But um, uh, <laughs> hello, Kutuz Kutuzov runs aground. And he's been, um, I think I'm, yeah, I'm zoomed out most of the time, but it, you just saw that he's, the Otago has been shooting AP the whole time, even though mm -hmm. the Kutuzov is very sharply angled. So, um, if he had been shooting HG, the ship would have been down by now, but. Yep. At the initial so. engagement, Kutuzov was broadside, but he missed it, Salvo looked like, so he should have definitely switched back to HG. Yeah, absolutely. I like to call those skill shells when people are using AP on me and it's not effective. Yeah. So again, lots of speeding up, slowing down, turning. I'm I'm missing most of these shells. It's getting kind of frustrating, but Yeah, well you got one that counts. Yeah. Didn't stick, but you forced his ECP at least. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> no, look at look at their HP. <laughs> yeah. They started almost uh, almost two to one, and that happened. So. And the Otago has a heal. Yeah. So I'm um, after after how this game has gone. I'm thinking, really, is this <laughs> is this is this really happening? Um, but now that the cap is, you know, that we have two caps and nine sixty, I'm I'm yeah. pretty I'm feeling pretty okay about it. Yeah, he's and gonna so have then, to push um, you in order to win. And then there's the hilarious. Validation. So now you know that Takao player is going to keep using AP constantly because, well, it worked on that one shot. <laughs> <laughs> His final shot, he got 6k after shooting for zero damage about 10 times. More importantly, he won the battle. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, anyway. Well, yeah, thanks for, for sharing that replay. Um, pretty cool to see a, a different ship in ranked than you would expect to see. Well, it's, it's been fun playing, and uh, Agnavoy rolls. That's all. Now, what rank are you at now? Uh, so I'm at, um, what am I at? I think, I think eight right now. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, um, David, thanks again for, for sharing the replay with me and uh, hopping in here for a joint commentary. Um, I'm going to go through and uh, do my usual stuff and get this up. So thanks. Absolutely. It was fun. See ya. See you later. And uh, rest of YouTube, uh, as always, please send me replays. I'm looking for plenty of replays of ranked battles. Um, great battles like what David showcased, but also just any sort of replay is fine. Uh, average battles are fine. Losses are fine. Games where you have no idea what the heck you did wrong are really good. Um, because the whole point of this channel is to, just to teach people um, ideas, strategies, tips, ways to play the game that maybe they didn't think originally. So just putting that out there. Um, thanks as always for the support and I'll see you guys next time.